Hello. I'm Crystal. Do you guys like uh, science? All right. So if baryon acoustic oscillations doesn't like get you kind of excited, by the end of this, hopefully it will. Gets me kind of excited. So we begin our night. Oh, uh, also side note, I did all the art myself, so you should be very impressed. This is Luna. Luna is a cosmologist. She studies the evolution of the universe. Don't judge. She starts studying about how the universe began, how it evolves, and eventually in hopes of finding how the universe will end. However, today she is faced with a quite serious problem. Luna is lost. She started her day in a wonderful location, right here, here in San Francisco. For this part of her day, she used Google Maps, one of our favorite barrier companies, to, um, at your place, cool to know. She started her day here in San Francisco, and she had a map. So she was not lost at the beginning of her day. She decided to hop on a rocket, and to get a closer look at some of the galaxies that she wanted to study. She headed to Andromeda. Andromeda is our nearest neighboring galaxy. And she was hoping to uh, go for a visit to have some more information about her studies. She called her brother Sonny, brother Sonny's back on Earth, called Sonny to say, hey, can you help give me directions? Because you're on Earth and I'm on a rocket and it's kind of hard to use a map. So Sonny is back on Earth. And he says, hey, Luna, I see you. You're going the right direction. You're going right towards the Andromeda constellation. Good job. Astronomers, they've been using, they've been sitting on Earth, and they've been making maps of the sky for a long time. And we've built all these lovely constellations and have great stories about them, which I can rant about forever, but it's another thing. <laughs> Astronomers have been studying the sky for years, and so we have really good maps of the sky. So Sunny is well prepared for helping Luna get unlost. Unfortunately, Luna is smack dab in between the stars, and she cannot recognize the constellation. It kind of sucks if you're uh, looking at a different angle, the stars don't quite look the same. So her celestial map is not particularly useful. Now she's lost between the stars, somewhere between the Milky Way galaxy, that's where we live, and Andromeda, and she has no idea which way to go. What she really needs is a map for the whole universe. That'd be dope. She uses her cosmological skills to get her out of her situation. Yay, science. As part of her studies, she was studying how the universe began. So she grabbed her pocket space telescope, and she pointed it to the farthest galaxies that she could see. That galaxy was approximately 11 billion light years away. <laughs> yeah. And what 11 billion light years means is that the, those galaxies that she's looking at, the light from those galaxies took 11 billion years to reach her. So she's looking in the past. That's her way of looking towards the beginning of the universe. She's looking at the galaxies as they were 11 billion years ago. 11 billion years is a really long time. Uh, that's before the dinosaurs. That's before the Earth. And that's even before the sun. I told you you'd be impressed. <laughs> when Luna looks at these two galaxies, 11 billion light years away, she sees something particularly interesting as a cosmologist. She sees that the galaxies are traveling away from her. And they're actually traveling away from each other. And all the galaxies are traveling away from her. And she doesn't understand. She took a shower this morning. Why is everything going away from her? All the galaxies are leaving her and she doesn't understand why. What's going on? It's because the universe used to be smaller. And then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so all the galaxies, whoosh, got bigger with it. So what she's detecting is the growth of the universe. The universe used to be small. And That's one theory of how the universe ends. She's excited by this discovery. The universe is getting bigger. But this kind of worsens her situation because uh, she's looking for a map because she's lost. And now she needs a map that gets bigger every day because if she gets a map today, her map is going to be out of date tomorrow because the universe is going to be bigger and the galaxy is going to be farther. So she doesn't know how long it's going to take her to get there. So she's very frustrated. She needs a map of the universe that will move and grow with the universe. Well, 
she starts to go back to her cosmological skills and she starts to think about how the universe evolved. About 13.7 billion BC, about you know, zero years after the Big Bang, there was a Big Bang. Pow. It was a huge explosion and it's really the birth of our universe. This explosion was and kept going outwards and outwards and traveling at a huge speed and everything of the universe was inside this very small ball. So we travel future, travel in the future about to the year 377,000 years after the Big Bang. The universe is a big ball of plasma. Plasma, so you, you heat up um, a solid and you get a liquid, you heat up a liquid, you get a gas, you heat up a gas, you get plasma. Science, that's great. Uh, so plasma is the fourth state of matter. Uh, it's kind of like lightning. Um, this ball of plasma, that is the everything of the universe in a very small area, is a uh, seven trillion degrees Fahrenheit. That's 700 million times hotter than the sun. <laughs> that was specifically not the metric system. <laughs> We're in America. <laughs> So this big ball of plasma, about 2,000 years later, has uh, some stuff in it. In the center, it has a very dense area. In that dense area, there are baryons, there is dark matter, and there are photons. Baryons is stuff that we're made of. Yay! We're all really made of the same stuff. Dark matter is um, this mysterious substance that makes up everything that we don't even really know what it is. There are some theories for another day. And there are photons, which is these things that are like you know, blinding me right now. They are the light and everything that we can see. <laughs> that was good. You should have tweeted that. <laughs> so we have this ball of plasma. It's uh, 379,000 years after the Big Bang. And uh, the ball of uh, plasma, uh, something very interesting happens. There's a, there's a slight... Uh, all the uh, baryons, the us stuff, and the photons move. A giant sound wave actually erupts from the center of this very deep, very dense, hot ball of plasma. And it jiggles all the baryons and the photons out. All the dark matter stays behind because we don't really understand what it is, but it's not affected by this for some reason. And what this happens is it creates a separation of the baryons and the dark matter. Um, which is, which is pretty interesting. Um, and here's a, here's a nice uh, demonstration for cosmic sound. <laughs> this sound event is called cosmic sound. Um, I don't really know how to represent it, but I thought this was cool. Uh, it's just, it, it jiggles all the, all the baryons out and it leaves the baryons in a pattern. So the baryons are pushed out and they get distributed around. They get distributed into this pattern and this pattern is the baryon acoustic oscillation. So this happens about 379,000 300, years after the Big Bang. And it pushed all the baryons out and left them in a nice little pattern. And our baryon acoustic oscillation, and uh, notice the scale bar. Uh, the universe is still, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the universe is still growing, by the way. It gets a, it gets a little bigger about 1,000 years later. The universe is still going. The universe is expanding. Ooh, the universe is cooling, it's getting bigger. Yeah, there's the same amount of heat, it gets bigger. It's like if you stir your soup, it gets colder. Um, the baryons turn into hydrogen. It's the Hindenburg stuff, kaboom. Uh, and so the baryons turn into hydrogen and uh, our universe is still ex expanding. And the hydrogen starts to collect with the other hydrogen to make hydrogen, meh, <laughs> hydrogen dust balls. That's about 100 million years. Gravity is what put, pulls them together. You have nothing else. The hydrogen pulls together and gets super, super hot at about 400 million years. So hot that a fusion erupts and creates the first stars. After about 700 million years, these stars get gravity pulling them together and we start to get galaxies and star clusters. And this process continues as the universe gets bigger and we start to get galactic clusters and more galactic clusters and the universe is just expanding and expanding until we see where we are today. So you notice that the oscillation, the pattern of the baryons corresponds to exactly where every, all, everything exists today. All of our galaxies, all of our galaxy clusters, all of our gal galactic superclusters, they're congregated in the same pattern that was left behind 379,000 years after the Big Bang. That was a very long time ago. We're at 13.7 billion years later. Which is great. That means that Luna has a map. All of the universe is 
we can predict exactly where everything is. The baryon acoustic oscillation created a pattern of the universe. As the universe grew, the baryons, the us stuff, turned into the galaxies of today, and it left behind this beautiful pattern. Cosmologists, including Luna, can use the baryon acoustic oscillation to understand many things about our universe. Baryon acoustic oscillations are used to understand the size of our universe. That's kind of what we saw here. We saw it expanding. You can also understand the rate of expansion. Because the baryon acoustic oscillations affected dark matter, it helps us understand some of the natures of dark matter. And also, it's just important for understanding how the cosmological constants that are in all of the equations and all of the evolution of the universe. So these are very useful to cosmologists to understand how our universe looks. So thanks to baryon acoustic oscillations for helping cosmologists find our way. So here's a toast. To the innate curiosity of humanity, which leads us to discover the theories governing our universe. Thank you so much, Crystal. And with this talk, her third talk, um, is Kelly Jensen near? Ah, Kelly. So Kelly, uh, Kelly is a mentor and a uh, mentor for tonight, mentor for Crystal. Crystal, if you will have us, would you become a fellow of the Odd Salon Fellows? Thank you, and thank you so much for that beautiful talk. Every time she inserted a parenthetical explainy phrase, that was because I was like, what is that word? And so that's like Hindenburg stuff. That was, was for me. What was that thing? Also, um, lightning, there's got to be a plasma out here somewhere, no? Um, I hope. Up next, I'd like to introduce somebody brand new to the Odd Salon stage, but not new to storytelling, and um, telling a story that some of you may think you know, 